So, she was about to start singing and gloating a song. Here we go. Down with children, do them in. Boil their bones and fry their skin. Bish them, squish them, bash them, mash them, spash them. Break them, shake them, slash them, smash them. Offer chucks with magic power. powder. Say eat up, then say it louder. Cram them full of sticky eats. Send them home still guzzling sweets. And in the morning, little fools go marching off to separate schools. A girl feels sick and goes all pale. She yells, hey, look, I've grown a tail. A boy who's standing next to her screams, help, I think I'm growing fur. Another shouts, V look like freaks. There's whiskers growing on our cheeks. A boy who was extremely tall cries out, What's wrong? I'm growing small. For tiny legs begin to sprout from everybody round about. And all at once, all in a trice, there are no ch children, only mice. In every school, it's mice galore, all running round the schoolroom floor. And all the poor demented teachers is yelling, Hey, who are these creatures? They stand upon the desks and shout, Get out, you filthy mice, get out. Will someone fetch some mousetraps, please? And don't forget to bring the cheese. Now mousetraps come and, and every trap goes snippity snap, snippity snap. The mousetraps have a powerful spring. The springs go crack, snap and ping. It's a lovely noise for us to hear is music to a witch's ear, dead mice in every place around, piled two feet deep upon the ground, with teachers searching left and right, but not a single child in sight. The teachers cry, what's going on? Oh, where have all the children gone? It's half past nine, and as a rule, they are never this late to school. Poor teachers don't know what to do. Some sit and read, and just a few amuse themselves throughout the day by sweeping all the mice away. And all of us bitches shout, Hooray! The recipe. <clears throat> I hope you haven't forgotten that while all this was going on, I was still stuck behind the screen on my hands and knees with one eye glued to the crack. I don't know how long I'd been there, but it seemed like forever. The worst part of it was not being allowed to cough or make a sound and knowing that if I did, I was as good as dead. And all the way through, I was living in the constant terror that one of the witches in the back row was going to get a whiff of my presence through those special nose holes of hers. My only hope, as I saw it, was the fact that I hadn't washed for days. That and never-ending excitement and clapping and shouting that was going on in the room. The witches were thinking of nothing except the Grand High Witch up there on the platform and her great plan for wiping out all of the children of England. They certainly weren't sniffing around for a child in the room. In their wildest dreams, if witches had dreams, that would almost never have occurred to any of them. I kept still and I prayed. The Grand High Witch dreadful gloating song was over now and the audience was clapping madly and shouting, brilliant, sensational, marvelous. You are a genius, oh brainy one. It is a thrilling invention, this delayed action mouse maker. It is a winner. And the beauty of it is, is that teachers will be the ones who bump off the stinking little children. It won't be us doing it. We shall never be caught. Beaches are never caught, snapped the Grand High Witch. Attention now, I want everybody's attention. I am going to be telling you what you must do to prepare Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker. Suddenly there came a great gasp from the audience. This was followed by a hubbub of shrieking and yelling, and I saw many of the witches leaping to their feet and pointing to the platform and crying out, Mice! 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 She's done it! And showed us. The brainy one has turned two children into mice, and there they are. I looked toward the platform. The mice were there all right, two of them running around near the Grand High Witches. Skirts. But these were not field mice or house mice or wood mice or harvest mice. These were white mice. I recognized them immediately as being my own little William and Mary. Mice shouted the audience. Our leader has made mice appear out of nowhere. Get the mousetraps. Fetch the cheese. 
I saw the Grand High Witch peering down at the floor and staring with obvious puzzlement at William and Mary. She bent lower to get a closer look, then she straightened up and shouted, Quiet. The audience became silent and sat down. These mice have nothing to do with me, she shouted. These mice are pet mice. These mice are quite obviously belonging to some repellent little child. In this hotel, a boy, it will be for certain, because boys are not, keep, girls are not keeping pet mice. A boy, a filthy, smelly little boy, will, will, will swipe him, will swizzle him, will have our tripes for breakfast. Silence, you know perfectly well. You must do nothing to draw attention to yourselves while you are living in this hotel. Let us, by all means, get rid of the evil-smelling little squirt, but we must do it very quietly as possible. For are we not all of us, the most respectable ladies, of the Royal Society of the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. What do you suggest then? How shall we dispose of this pile of filth? They are talking about me, I thought. These females are actually talking about how to kill me. I began to sweat. Whoever he is, he is not important. Leave him to me. I shall smell him out and turn him into a mackerel and leave him dished up for supper. Bravo! Cut off his head, chop off his tail, fry him in hot butter. We can imagine that none of this was making me feel very very comfortable. William and Mary were still running around on the platform, and I saw the Grand High Witch aim a swift running kick at William. She caught him right on the point of her toe, sent him flying. She did the same to Mary. Her aim was extraordinary. She should have made a, She would have made a great football player. Both mice crashed against the wall and for a few minutes lay stunned. Then they got to their feet and scampered away. Attention again, the Grand High Witch was shouting. I will give you the recipe for concocting Formula 86. Delayed action mouse maker. Get out your pencils and paper. Handbags were open all over the room and notebooks were fished out. Give us the recipe, oh brainy one, cried the audience impatiently. Tell us the secret. First, said the Grand Witch, I had to find something that would cause children to become very small very quickly. And what was that? That part was simple, cried the witch. All you have to do is you wishing to make a child small is to look at him through the wrong end of a telescope. She's a wonder. Who else would have thought of a thing like that? So you take the wrong end of a telescope, continued the Grand High Witch, and you boil it until it gets soft. How long does that take? 24 hours of boiling. And while this is going on, you have exactly 45 brown mice. And you chop off their tails with a carving knife. And you fry their tails in hair oil until they are nice and crisp. What do we do with all those mice who have their tails chopped off? Asked the audience. You simmer them in frog juice for one hour. One hour. But listen to me. So far, I have only given you the easy part of the recipe. The, ir the really difficult problem is to put in something that will have genuine delayed action, resulting something that can be eaten by children on a certain day, but which will not start working, working until nine o'clock the next morning when they arrive at school. What did you come up with? Tell us the great secret, the secret said the Grand Witch. It's an alarm clock. Of course it is. An alarm clock. You can set the alarm clock for 24 hours exactly at 9 o'clock in the morning. But we will need 5 million alarm clocks. We will need one for each child. Idiots. If you are wanting a steak, you do not cook the whole cow. It is the same with alarm clocks. One clock will make enough for a thousand children. Here is what you do. You set your alarm clock to go off at nine o'clock tomorrow. Then you roast it in the oven until it is crisp and tender. Are you writing this down? We are the Grand Mistress. We are, we are. Next, you take your boiled telescope, your fried mouse tails, your cooked mice, your roasted alarm clock, and you put them all together into the mixer and you mix at full speed and this will give you a nice thick paste. Wow. 
why it's in the mixer. It is still mixing. You must add to the yolk in Van Grusom egg. A gruntle's egg. What shall we do? What, what, we shall do that underneath all the clamor that was going on. I heard one witch in the back row saying to her neighbor, I'm going to, I'm getting a bit old to go into a bird's nest. Those ruddy gruntles always nest very, very high. So you mix in the egg, the grand witch went on, and van after the other, you also mix in the following items. The claw of a crabber cruncher, the beak of a blabber snitch, the snout of a gravel squirt, and the tongue of a cat springer. I trust you are not having any trouble finding those? None at all, they cried. We will spear the blabber snitch, trap the crab cruncher, and shoot the gravel squirt, and catch the cat springer in this burrow. Excellent, went on to the witch. You will have to mix everything together in the mixer and you will have the most marvelous looking green liquid. Put one drop, just one, in this liquid into a hot or a sweet and at nine o'clock the next morning, the child who ate it will turn into a mouse in 26 seconds. But when, but one, one word of warning, never increase the dose, don't make it more. Never increase the dose. I lost where I am. Never, never put more than one drop into each sweet or chocolate and never give more than one sweet or chocolate to each child. An overdose of delayed action mouse maker will mess up the timing of the alarm clock and cause the child to turn into a mouse too early. A large overdose might even have an instant effect and you won't want that, would you? You won't want children turning into mice right there in the sweet shop. That would give the game away. So be very careful and do not overdose. Bruno Jenks disappears. The Grand High Witch was starting to talk again. I am go now going to prove to you that this recipe is working perfect to perfection. You understand, of course, that you can set the alarm clock to go off at any time you like. It does not have to be nine o'clock. So yesterday, I'm personally preparing a small quantity of magic formula in order to give you a public demonstration, but I am making one small change in the recipe. Before I am roasting the alarm clock, I'm setting it off to not at nine o'clock the next morning, but at half past three the next afternoon. And that is precisely seven minutes time from now. The audience of witches was listening intently. So what I'm going, what I'm doing yesterday with this magic liquid, I, I will tell you what I am doing. I'm putting one droplet of it into a very squishy chocolate bar and I am giving this bar to a repulsively smelling little boy who is hanging around the lobby of the hotel. The Grand High Witch paused. The audience remained silent waiting for her to go on. I watched this repulsive little boy gobble up the squishy bar and when he had finished I said to him was it good would you like some more he said yes I will give you six more bars if you like if you meet me in the ballroom of this hotel at 25 past three tomorrow afternoon six bars I'll be there you bet I'll be there so the stage is set shouted the grand high witch the poof Proof is in the pudding. It's about to begin. Don't forget that before I am roasting the alarm clock yesterday, I was setting it for half past three today. It is now, it is now exactly 25 minutes past three, and the nasty little stinker, who will be turning into a mouse in five minutes' time, should at this very moment be standing outside those doors. And by gum, she was absolutely right. The boy, whoever he might be, was already rattling the door handle, banging at the doors with his fist, Quick, put on your wigs, put on your gloves, put on your shoes. There was a great rustle and bustle of putting on wigs and gloves and shoes, and I saw the Grand High Witch herself reach for her face mask and put it over her with a revolting face of hers, and it was astonishing to see how the mask transformed her. All of a sudden, she became once again a rather pretty young lady. Let me in, came the boy's voice from behind the doors. Where are those chocolate bars you promised me? I'm here to collect. Dish them out. He is not only smelly, he is also greedy, said the Grand High Witch. Remove the chains from the door and let him in. The extra, extraordinary thing about the mask was that its lips moved quite naturally when she spoke. You really couldn't see that it was a mask at all. One of the witches leapt to her feet and unfastened the chains. She opened the two huge doors. Then I heard her saying, Why, hello, little man. 
How lovely to see you. You have come for your chocolate bars, have you not? They are ready for you. Do come in. A small boy wearing a white t-shirt and gray shorts and gym shoes entered the room. I recognized him at once. He was called Bruno Jenkins and he was staying at the hotel with his parents. I don't care. I didn't care for him. He was one of those boys who was always eating something and whenever you meet him. Meet him in the hotel lobby and he's stuffing sponge cake into his mouse, path, mouth. Pass him in the corridor and he's fishing potato crisps out of a bag by the fistful. Catch sight of him in the hotel garden and he is wolfing a dairy milk bar and has two more sticking out of his trousers, trouser pockets. And what's more, Bruno never stopped boasting about how his father made more money than my father and that they own three cars. But worse than that, yesterday morning, I found him kneeling on the flagstones of the hotel terrace with a magnifying glass in his hand. There were columns of ants marching across the flagstones and Bruno Marx was focusing the sun through his magnifying glass and roasting the ants one by one. I liked watching them burn, he said. That's horrible, I cried. Stop it. Let's see you stop me. At this point, I had pushed him with all my might and he crashed sideways onto the flagstones. His magnifying glass had splintered into many pieces and he had leapt up shrieking. My father is going to get you for this. Then he had run off, presumably to find his wealthy dad. That was the last time I had seen Bruno Mark Jenkins until now. I doubted very much that he was about to turn into a mouse, although I must confess, I was secretly hoping it might happen. Either way, I didn't envy being him up there in front of all those witches. Darling boy, the Grand Witch from the platform cooed. I have your chocolates all ready for you. Do come up here first and say hello to all these lovely ladies. Oh, oh. Her voice was quite different now. It was soft and gentle and absolutely dripping with syrup. <laughs>